Welcome to my Scaling Networks Cisco course review. Here we're looking at lab 2115, examining a redundant design. So first of all, part one, check to see if STP is converged. We're waiting for all the lights to go green and the appropriate one is to go orange. And yes, they have. Okay, so access there. There'll be green between the PC and the access switch. And then there should be one amber, one green between the distribution switches and the access switches, which they are. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's switch it to simulation mode. We want to ping from PC1. PC6. Well, first thing is, well, let's go ahead and change this just a little bit. Alright, what IP address is this? So, we're going to ping PC6. And you should be able to notice it's pinging, capture and forward, capture and forward. It'll be sending a broadcast to seeing who is PC6. And there it goes, it is complete. So let's go and add a simple PDU to create PDU from PC1, verify ARP, which we already did. Notice the ARP replies to PC6, travels back along one path. That's because it already knows the path to go from this guy to that guy. Again, record the loop free path. Basically, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Oh, take that back. A1 to D2, D2 to C1, C1 to D3, D3 to A6. That was the path. That's because, again, those are the ones that are all in forwarding states. There are no blocking states. Again, we can also go back and go through this guy right here. That will show you the path. All right, let's switch back to real time. We can also do a new scenario if you'd like. I don't really see the need for a new scenario, so let's go ahead and let's ping PC5. Again, and then A5, D3, C1, D2, A1. All right, so that's all good there. Let's move on to part three. Let's delete the link between A1 and D2. I sometimes hate packet tracer. All right, tap and escape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I want to ping PC6 again. Until this link is converged, we can't do anything. We have to give it time and eventually this port will go from a blocking port to a forwarding state, thus allowing us to actually 
I hate packet tracers sometimes. Now that that's a forwarding state, the trend ping can actually transverse the network and go back. Again, until that goes into a, a forwarding state, nothing really happens. So we've done this, we've done that. Let's delete delete the link between C1 and D3. We're going to ping again. Notice all of these are still showing blocking states. So we have to give it some time for it to actually get to a forwarding state. And it takes some time. We sent three packets, four, sorry, four packets. And we're only on the second one. Let's go and change this back over to real time. And you'll notice, give it a few seconds. STP is doing its job. This process can take 30-ish seconds. But they're all orange now. And it sh SDP should be doing its process. And there we go. They are now transitioning to green. So ping will now work. So that one's done. That one's done. That guy is done. Let's go ahead and delete D4 altogether. Notice I'm in real time, not in simulation mode. Notice all of those are still in a blocking state. Now we'll probably see it go A1, D1. Probably the shortest path would be C2, but you'll notice that port is in a blocking state, so it has to go A1, D1, C1, C1, C2, D3, A6. And it does work, even though this is the fastest path. STP has already showed that port disabled, so we'll take a longer path because that is still not transitioning. All right, last one. Let's go ahead and delete C1. Notice that guy is still in a locking state. It'll take a few minutes for them to transition. Yeah, we should lose the first three requests, and the fourth request should be enough time for this to pick back up. Yep, there it goes. Went green. Now it should ping all the way through. All right. And that's actually the end of this lab. I want to thank you.